Okay, hi, welcome, we're back. Uh, so today I'd like to go over how to make a menu bar. So if I run this program, I just want you to see what the uh, menu bar looks like. So here it is. So this is the menu bar here at the top. You see, you can have sub-menus, like you can go and open, you know, specific menu items at, at the top. Now, how do you create this? So it's actually, it's actually not hard. Uh, all we're going to do here is, after creating the window, we're going to say FL menu bar. And let's go take a look at the constructor of FL menu bar. And um, it's here in um, our widget class. So if I go to class list, or sorry, index, and then I go to M for uh, menu bar, it's right there. And see what it's inherited from. It's from FL menu underscore, and then from widget. Interestingly, also, by the way, the um, is there's a subclass called SysMenu, and if we click on this one, it says a class to create, modify, delete menus that appear on Mac OS X. So that's an operating system specific one, because I think the the menu system on on a Mac is a slightly different. I haven't used this one, but for those people that have a Mac, uh, you're welcome to uh, try it out. However, for the menu bar here. The, the way we create it, obviously, is the same as any other widget, right? X, Y, width, and height, and then the label, which is the string. And um, so I've done that here in my code. I've created it, so starting at the top left-hand corner, and the width being the width of the window. So that's important, because you want it to go all the way across, right? Because when you run this, you don't want, usually, you want this bar to be all the way across on the top, which is which is what it is right now. That's good. And then the width, uh, sorry, the height is uh, 25. And you could make it thicker if you want. Although if you make it too thick, it's going to look weird. Um, the next thing I do is I start adding things to the menu. So menu dot add and menu being the variable that I have set the menu bar to. So let's see how add works. Um, therefore, if you notice, does menu bar have add? No, it doesn't. So that means, oh, it must be the parent class method. So let's go up to FL menu. And notice that FL menu subclasses, there's a few of them. There's FL choice, there's FL menu button. Let's take a look at what FL menu button looks like just for the fun of it. There it is. So there's a menu button. Not what we're doing right now, but cool to know that it exists and that we could use it. And then there's FL Choice. I don't know if they have a picture of this one. Oh, they do. Okay, so there's an, there's an FL Choice. So it's like a thing you can click on and it, it opens up some possibilities. Uh, but the one we want to look at right now is FL Menu underscore, which is the parent of FL Menu Bar. And there it is. You can see that it's got the add. There they are. There's the first ones. So let's click on add and let's see what we can provide it. Uh, the first one is the label, and then uh, a shortcut, and then a callback, and then user data. So, like if you want to pass something. So, if we go back to our label, shortcut, callback. So, there's my label, there's my shortcut, which means there is no shortcut for this one, and then um, the callback. And then the, now if you notice, are these guys, okay, so these two guys, notice these two guys right here uh, end in equals zero. That means they're optional arguments. They have default values. So therefore, I don't actually have to put zero in for those guys. OK, so when I separate um, things here in the string for menu add, I'm going file slash open. Now, when I run that, there is my file and there is my open. 
okay? And when I click on this, it says this is the open CB or open callback. So you can see now from the code that I'm running this function, open CB. It just pops up a message saying this is the open callback. Notice though that I am sending these two arguments and if you'll notice when we go to add menu which obviously as I mentioned is not here it's in the base class or the parent class right and there it is there's add notice these two guys are as I said default arguments because they're both equal to zero so if I go back to my code and I delete these two guys that means this should work just fine and it does okay um, I don't need those last two guys on add menu but if I need them question is well why would you need them and so the first one is user data so that's essentially any data that you'd like to pass like we've seen before and then lastly the last one is an integer which is a flag so what we're gonna have to do now is we're gonna have to go and see what these flags are and they're listed here okay these are bit flags and um, they can be or together right with that vertical with that vertical line they can be or together um, so the, the descriptions of these uh, these are so in other words you wouldn't actually type an integer but if you type this all uppercase uh, FLTK what's called you know constant it re gets replaced with an integer that's why it says up here uh, that it's an integer okay uh, where was I now way up at the top yeah so I'm, I'm talking specifically about these guys here I haven't used them in my program but you could uh, in any case I can simply delete those last two and I can delete these last two and it should be fine now what if I want another one uh, after edit and I want it to be let's say edit preferences I can simply go like this preferences and now um, the second argument is the shortcut okay and so the shortcut here I can you if I want to use a function key I could go FL all caps here FL um, F plus 2 and so that would be the F2 button for example so if I run this and if I you can see now there's edit oh wait a minute uh, I, mech I messed that up oh no wait yeah, I just didn't put a space in there it there kind of is but there's more space here Let's go see how um, that looks. I guess it's just because this thing is longer. Um, I suppose I could go like that maybe. Might be better. But in any case, the second argument is the shortcut. And in terms of the shortcuts, let's go take a look at um, the enumerations so if I go to my main page and I go to FLTK enumerations then okay so these are the special ones um, they're under F event key and uh, so notice the one I was using before in the code was this one FLF which is one of the function keys plus a number um, and you can use any of these other ones if you choose but you can also use uh, a letter as well 
Okay, so let's say for example, I don't want to use a function key. Let's say I just want to type a letter. Then I would actually, so essentially what's going on here is in C++, okay, I would be, it, it, so let's go take a look at the second argument here. You notice it's, it says the shortcut is, is except, expecting an integer, right? Well, see, here's the thing about this, is that for single characters, right, if I kind of go like this and show you, in C++, that is called a character in single quotes, and that would work if this was C++, but it's not. It's Python. And so if I did that, it's not going to work in Python because single quotes in Python is a string. And so I have to replace it with ORD bracket H, which essentially gives me the ordinal integer value of the letter H, which is exactly what it's expecting. So in essence, when I now run this, all I have to do is hit the letter H on my keyboard, and lo and behold, the help callback is called, okay? And um, that's how it works there. But I could, you know, how about I would do something like this? And I could go something like, uh, how about about? And, and so now, um, if I did this, now it would kind of look slightly different as I could click on it. And also it would show me the letter that I could press as the shortcut, okay? But I can also have the ampersands in the titles of the menu. And so now notice I have one against the P, before the P here and before the B. So when I run this, notice the P is underlined here. And so I can go Alt P and then I can go Alt B and that'll launch the callback for me. Or, alternatively, notice that the H here is the shortcut for that, so I can just hit the letter H on my keyboard without using Alt at all, and then it comes up as well. So the other thing that I wanted to show you is the callback for the window itself. So we haven't done this yet. So if you'll notice here in line 28, I've set, so W is the window here, and I've set the callback for the window. Question, when does the callback for the window get executed? So if I run this program, so I can actually make the callback of this window execute by clicking on this. So nothing happens when I click on the minimize, right? But if I click on this X, which is usually meant to close the program, Notice that it said shutting down here. Okay, so if I go to my code and um, I set the callback for the window to be close win. So notice here is close win. In this case, the widget is the window itself, but all I'm doing is I'm printing, shun print, I'm printing shutting down, but I'm also then calling w.hide. Now what's W? In this case, obviously, I could also use widget because that will be the window. But in this case, W is the window. OK, so there it is. There's hide for the window. And it says removes the window from the screen. If the window is already in or has not been shown, uh, this does nothing and is harmless. However, what's interesting about hide is it'll actually call FL run to return if there are no more visible windows. So notice the last line of this program is FL run, which is the infinite loop that waits for events. But if all windows, in this case, I've only got one window open in this program. Now I could have more, I could have two or three windows open. But when all of the open windows are hidden, then this will this line 31 will return and the program will be over 
That's important to note. Okay, so here it is, here's run. As long as any windows are displayed, this calls FL wait repeatedly. When all the windows are closed, it returns zero. Okay? So that's the purpose of FL run. And so in our code, we are calling, so we're kind of overriding the, the clicking on the, the little X, right? And we're saying do something and then shut the window down. Now you don't have to print something, you could do something else. For example, um, like saving a high score, for example, or um, something of that nature to a file, let's say. Okay. I just noticed that in my example code here, I had a, a second argument uh, for open and call and file, but I've deleted them from here, and so now it's these aren't going to work properly. So if I run this program, um, if I go file open, it's going to error out because I'm not providing that argument. So just to be sure, if you are copying this, um, I would get rid of these guys now, and it'll match what I'm what I'm when I'm going add. I don't have anything after the open CB. If I did want to pass something in there, if I wanted to go comma and some variable, then I would have to add that comma um, and something here, right? To, to accept that second argument, okay? Um, but that, like I said, that's optional. It's not required. Okay, so I have uh, kind of added a few things to edit. I've got preferences, undo, redo. Now, I don't have the code for this, but I just want to show you how it looks. So for example, if I run this one, I'm going to have edit, and then I'm going to have preferences, undo, redo. So in essence, and if I don't like the order of these guys, if I, don't, if I want to fix the order up, then I can simply change the order here. And let's say I wanted to have preferences at the end, I could just simply do that and then uh, run it again. And now uh, preferences will be at the bottom. I realize that it's the same callback now for all these guys. But that's not my point in showing you this. My point is, is that you can add as many um, menus under uh, a title menu as you want simply by going forward slash. 